In this edition of School Dilemmas, how much pressure should you put on pupils to work harder and faster? How do you balance pupils' academic achievement with their social well-being? In this story, based on a real case study, two colleagues take opposing positions on teaching a gifted Year 8 pupil. What course of action would you take? Should you hothouse a pupil with exceptional talent? And how would you resolve conflict with colleagues who disagree with you? But I don't want to see him turn into some academic freak. Although the dramatisation reflects real events, we're not, of course, using the actual people or school involved. Sit down. Do you want to get those textbooks out? In my six years teaching maths, I have never come across any pupil so naturally gifted as Adrian. Okay, everybody, here are your learning objectives for the day. Everybody except for Adrian. He's in my year eight class, but he could easily cope in my top year eleven group. Is everything okay there, Adrian? No, I'm fine, sir. OK, you just put your hand up if you need me, OK. I don't like children working on their own apart from the class, but at least he's not totally isolated, like he is when he's taught by my head of department. He has two extra sessions a week on his own. OK, so this one's quite hard because it's from this year's GCSE paper, but I think you can handle it. I'm really quite excited by Adrian's ability. It's a once-in-a-career experience to teach someone so gifted. Good. Now, part two. Can you plot this on the grid? Do you want to have a go? He's more than capable of sitting his GCSE this year. That'll be a first for any department. An extra push and an A star is in the bag. Absolutely right. But you knew that. Um, Adrian, would you mind doing some extra sessions after school? I've spoken to your parents and they're happy about it. Would that be OK? Yeah. Fine. Shall we say Tuesdays then? Yeah, fine. So now, below is a list of lessons. I don't feel comfortable about these extra lessons. It's bad enough he's alone in class without being taken away from everyone else during lunchtime. My boss wants me to push him even harder. Well, I won't do it. So am I right to refuse to push Adrian? So is it right to want to push Adrian? I know he has huge potential. But I don't want to see him turned into some kind of academic freak. OK, so let's have a look. 0.915 and 3.35. Well done. Shall we try another one? OK, go on. I'd like Adrian to be pushed harder in class, but my colleague hasn't done much about it. I'd like him to have his own room during lesson time so he can concentrate. My colleague hasn't done anything about that either. We've talked about it, but my wishes are being ignored. I believe it's our job as teachers to help pupils realise their potential. I've started to notice that Adrian is hardly mixing with any of the other pupils. If he's not getting extra tuition, he's on his own doing even more work. Is everything OK, Adrian? Yeah, fine. Then you want to go and get some fresh air with everybody else? No. I've never seen him being teased or picked on, but it's not right to be so isolated. It's not our job to turn children into social misfits. I know it takes him away from his peers, but you wouldn't see it a problem if he was an elite athlete, would you? But can I continue to defy my immediate boss? Or should I take the matter higher? But how can I get my colleague to agree? Or should I take the matter higher? 